Florida Governor Jeb Bush still has not officially announced that he's seeking the Republican nomination for president in 2016, but that hasn't kept him from experiencing the kind of media speculation, scrutiny, and gaps that usually attend a run for national office. You might remember this story from a few months ago when Bush's political action committee, Right to Rise, hired a young tech guru by the name of Ethan Zahor to be its chief technology officer. That move was immediately followed by backlash after websites like BuzzFeed dug up some series of offensive tweets from Zahor's Twitter feed. Zahor immediately tried to apologize for the offensive tweets, but the incipient Bush for President campaign was already working to distance themselves from their new CTO. By the end of the week, Zahor had resigned. That had all happened in February. And now, Ethan Zahor is back, and he's using his tech skills to help others avoid the same kind of career follies. Zahor has just developed a new app called Clear, now available on iOS platforms, which peruses your postings history, like on apps like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and then deletes any potentially offensive posts it finds. Zahor told MSNBC that he does not want to defend his troublesome tweets and that his app is not intended to hide anyone's past. Rather, he says, Clear is designed to make sure that your online history makes sense in the context of your current life. And joining me now is Ethan Zahor, former chief technology officer to the Jeb Bush supporting, quote, Right to Rise PAC and founder of Clear. All right, first off, tell me about Clear and, and, um, and what, what it is actually. Was my description of it accurate? It was accurate, yeah. So the way it works is that you sign up for an account, you connect your different social media accounts. Right now we're doing Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And then we scrape everything you've ever posted on any of those accounts and we look for things that could be troublesome and you might want to have a second look at. How do you, what words are you looking for here? There's, a, there's three phases that we do really. The first phase is to find the words that, for example, you can't say on TV, they're really bad words. And so we flag anything that matches that. Okay. The second phase is that we look if you're talking about groups of people. So whether it's good or bad, whatever the group it is, you should probably take a second look at it because generalities can get you into trouble. And then the third is we integrate with the IBM Watson supercomputer. That's the one that won Jeopardy and we pass Watson a chunk of text and he says yes this is positive or negative and it's really bad or it's okay and so we use that to determine okay. everything that you should take a second look at. Interesting. So you kind of scrape for any uh, potentially hot words. Yeah, yeah. We don't make too much judgment because there's a lot of things you can say that on their face they appear to be okay but in a different context of your life they may not appear to be okay. Yeah. So we kind of try to flag more than we should maybe. Tell me a little bit about what happened with your tweets. So you had this Twitter feed, mm -hmm. and what, what was discovered exactly? Yeah, so right out of college, I wanted to be an improv comedian or an actor maybe, and I studied at the Groundlings in West Hollywood. Yeah. So my, my motivation at the time was just to say things in class or on stage that are funny, and yeah. if they got laughs, I would remember it and turn them into jokes. And I thought, I should put my jokes on Twitter, because that seems like a good place to store things. No, And no. it turns out that I was very wrong. <laughs> But yeah, everything was said with, with the best of intentions. And when I saw the stuff unearthed okay, recently... Some of them were really best intentions. Like, you were using some language that's oh, yeah, clearly inappropriate. I, at the time, I look at it now, I'm like, oh my god, that's terrible. But yeah. when I said it with my friends in West Hollywood, it was kind of firmly tongue-in-cheek. I, yeah. I love West Hollywood. But then, when you started working for Jeb Bush, didn't you think to delete those before you started? I thought that about 10 minutes too late because <laughs> the, the news leaked that I had this new job which wasn't supposed to happen yeah. and I thought wow I better make sure that anything that I had in the past is as gone as I can make it so I started deleting my tweets and then BuzzFeed noticed and wrote an article about my tweets and then the whole thing happened. Yeah and, and people will say that this is a way to help people hide offensive things that should be public. What do you say to that? I don't think so. I think if you're a bad person and you have been in the past, you will continue to be in the future. So there's no app that can save you. The thing is that the thing I learned there's is there's no app that can save you. That's no, a good full quote. There's not. Yeah. I've learned that context is is so key to everything you said, and people would be surprised going back five or ten years when they said things that at the time they thought were completely appropriate, but their whole entire lives have changed, and so those posts have not. And so the context is completely it, it changed, and so they need to take a second look at it. Do you think that the kinds of incidents that Clear is designed to address are primarily problems of context, or is this usually about people making genuine mistakes? I think it's context. I mean, I think that if you're mistake prone, you probably will continue to be, and you should own up and, and, and pay for what happened to you. Um, but context, it's, it's hard to describe 
what that means until you go through it, unfortunately. And a lot of people yeah. think that oh, I've never posted things like that, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be it could be it could be you smiling with a bottle of Coca Cola, and then later on you want to work for Pepsi, and someone can make you look like a Coca Cola loyalist. Yeah, but overtly sexist or overtly racist comments. Like mm -hmm. if someone tweets those when they're sort of like off duty. Don't we want to know, as the American public, we do. don't we want to know that that's how they feel? Especially I, if they're in a position of power. Or position I think so. Yeah, I totally think so. I don't think Clear is designed for those kind of people. It's designed for, like in my case, I was on stage playing the role of a sorority girl, just saying what came out of my head, and I turned it into jokes <laughs> later. And uh, I was obviously stupid and wrong about that, but there was no ill intention behind it. Yeah. And so that's what I think Clear is for. It's, it, do you think that we're denying people the right to make mistakes and grow up in the internet age? I mean, sort of like more broadly, John Ronson's book has come out. It's getting a ton of attention about mm -hmm. the idea that, it, you know, one mistake online it can amplify hugely. Um, it, it, does that become harder because things are now online in perpetuity? In, in I think that the mistakes you do make are amplified way yeah. more. And I'm not sure that any sort of... So like clear works with your past. It doesn't work with your present. So if you say something that gets out there and then five minutes later you get in some serious trouble, there's, clear's not going to help you with that. Yeah. And I'm not sure if anything should help you with that. Interesting. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. I always am nervous with my little sister on Facebook and Twitter and things. I'm always like, you should just not tweet. Like, yeah. as a teenager, I think you should just never tweet. Well, people understand like, that it, nowadays. I agree. Like, just don't I, say things. That makes more sense to me. But, but ten years ago, ten years ago, did you feel the same way? Perhaps not. So, no. and but that stuff is still out there and could be and could be made you could be made to have you look the wrong way. Yeah. No, it's true. Hey, Ethan, thank you so much for coming on. So yeah, my thank thanks you, to Ethan Zahor, former Chief Technology Officer to Jeb Bush and creator of Clear. And that does it for this edition of Code Forward. I'm no hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russer. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.